So let's talk about opening PowerShell and discovering our PowerShell version. So I'm going to come down here to my search bar and from my search I'm going to type PowerShell. Now I'm doing this on Windows 10. This is going to be a little bit different if you are doing it in Windows 8 uh, or if you're doing it in a Linux or Mac OS system. But you can still on the Windows uh, 8, you can still do the search. It just might come up a little bit differently. Now, I've got uh, several different options here. So I have Windows PowerShell. And over here, I have my options to open, run as administrator, run the ISC as administrator, or do the PowerShell ISC. Here, you'll also see the ISC, PowerShell x86, uh, and the ISC x86. Now, you want to stay away from the x86 versions. You may not see this, by the way. The x86 versions are 32-bit versions of the applications. If you don't have x86, then it's a 64-bit version of the application. So if you have a 32-bit version only, then you're not going to see options to 64-bit. So, uh, the PowerShell uh, app is the basic PowerShell console. So, when we open the PowerShell console, if we open it, we're just going to open it up as a standard user. So, I'm going to click that and get this back onto the right screen. And here is my PowerShell console. Now, at this point, I actually do not have administrative permissions. So if I try to do anything in PowerShell that requires administrative permissions, it's going to generate an error for me because of the um, system security protection. So if I want to have full access to it, then when I do my search for PowerShell, if I can type correctly, I want to make sure to run as administrator. And when that one comes up, now that's going to pop up our little, uh, do you want to run this, allow this app to make changes? We're going to hit yes, and that's going to give us the administrator permissions. And I want you to see right here, we have administrator. So that tells me that I'm running as an administrator. If I don't see that, then I'm not running as an administrator. Now, the other thing I want you to see is right here, the little PS in front of the prompt. If we just run a standard command prompt, let me move this up so we can compare the two side by side. The PowerShell one has the PS, this one doesn't. Now, you can also look at the color difference, and your colors are going to be a little bit different. I've customized mine, and we'll show you how to customize that here in a minute. So, uh, that PS is going to be your big indicator because the colors can be customized on either one. So that's what you're looking for. The PS here, Administrator up here, Windows PowerShell up here. All right, so how do I discover what version I'm running? For that, I'm going to issue the command dollar sign PS version table. And that will tell me which PowerShell version that I'm running. And on this system, I'm currently running PowerShell 5. I think we're actually up to about PowerShell 7 now. Um, Honestly, most of what you do in mo in the different versions of PowerShell is going to be pretty similar. If you want to upgrade PowerShell, you can go down or go out to Microsoft's website and download the latest version of the PowerShell installer, and it will upgrade you to the latest version of PowerShell. But most of the time, I mean, unless there's something really specific that you're looking for using, in, looking to use in version six or seven. Um, in general, you're probably going to run pretty well. The big difference of that is they made a lot of changes between PowerShell version 2 and 3. So you want to make sure that you have at least version 3 because of some of the big changes that they made. They also made some nice updates to the ISE in version 5. Um, I use AISA a little bit less, but if you're going to use it more, I would suggest being at at least version 5. Okay, let's talk about customizing our PowerShell console. So we've got the console set up or up and active right here. I can right click and go to properties and this is going to let me customize what this looks like. So I'm using a, you know, let's start over the options first. So we can set the cursor size, we can set the command history size, this is how many commands it's going to remember, and then you can use your arrow keys uh, and F7 to navigate through previous entered commands. I tend to not do that a whole lot. Um, I will tend to go back through one or two commands at most, I tend to not cycle through a whole lot, so I normally leave that pretty standard. And then you'll see a couple of other options down here. 
uh, quick edit mode, insert mode, use control shift C and V as a copy and paste, which is a little different than the standard uh, control C, control V. Here's where you set your font and set your font size to something that's comfortable. I tend to set mine a little bit higher than I normally like because I want to be able, I want it to show up better on some of these demonstration videos. But you can set it to whatever is comfortable, kind of with the colors. You want to set it to something that's going to be easy to read that's comfortable. With the font, you can use different fonts. Um, and you want something that's going to make some of the commands or some of the uh, punctuation stand out. So, like, let me go close out of here. And example, we want to be able to quickly tell the difference between a square bracket and a curly bracket, or between an apostrophe and a backtick. And so some of those things you want to be able to identify fairly quickly and easily. So make sure that whatever you use for your uh, font is something that will allow you to see that difference easily enough. And then layout, so the screen width, the screen height, uh, we can wrap text, output text on resize. Again, you, this is going to be more just something that you are comfortable with rather than anything that's specifically right or wrong. And then here's where you're going to set your uh, screen, your uh, background colors, your pop-up text, your pop-up backgrounds. So all of your different uh, color schemes will be set here. Okay. Uh, and then last but not least is the little terminal tab, um, which I normally don't set at all. When I'm customizing a screen for me, I tend to set the colors and the font size if I'm using a monitor that's a little farther away or something like that. So that tends to be the only customizations that I will do to the console. Now to exit the console, we can either type the command exit or we can click the X up here. Either one will work equally well. All right, so that shows you how to get into your PowerShell console and customize it just a little bit.